Um, you guys all know what's coming in my next couple of white games, so I have to uh, start with f4 followed by e4 if at all possible. This could be quite a challenge because I, I appear to have drawn an fm opponent. Uh, <laughs> square lols. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how You're that works black, out. It's okay. But I uh, I do have black in the first game, so I can attempt to at least play as normal here. Uh, and we will see what happens. Uh, we're just awaiting his first move. If it comes, it's a it's a an English FM as well, actually. So I might have half an idea who this is, but. Uh, but who knows. Um, okay, so I'm going to play uh, play this classical Dutch thing. Not quite as extravagant as as going 1f4 and then e4 and move 2, but um oh, why have I gone e5? That's not the that's not the trendy thing these days. People normally go knight e4. Oh well. Uh, I've actually completely forgotten my theory to this line. I'm sure my student uh, would be able to tell me what it is, but uh, no, actually, there's no chance that he'd be able to tell me what it is. So, oh, oh I've I've upset John's feelings. That that was uh, my producer at Hong Kong, John, who you saw in the uh, break there. And okay, we've kind of got some kind of vaguely normal position that I'm not massively happy with in this uh, in this game and I'm 20 seconds down on the clock but um, it's normal-ish I suppose uh, you always want to be meeting f4 uh, you always want to be meeting e4 with f4 excuse me um, and so long as nothing nasty happens to you in the center then it normally works out rather well for you it, what I'm worried about is the uh, something nasty happening to me in the center uh something nasty is happening to me in the center how am i defending <laughs> e5 against various things including queen d5 check i'm gonna need to somehow sacrifice this pawn or maybe bishop f6 get up gets away with it i'm not sure uh, because there are some tricks where he goes queen d5, check, and knight takes e5, and I just recapture. And uh, his queen won't be defending e5 because I can just swap it off. But of course he's not fallen for any basic tricks like that. He's just going for the claiming the center. Because uh, that's just a really sensible thing to do. Whenever your opponent's attacking on the side of the board, you just counterattack in the center and everything is fine. And uh, we do see him going for the quick queen d5 check. But, um, you know, as of yet, I haven't blundered lots and lots of pieces or done anything really horrendous. So, you know, I've dropped a little bit behind on the clock. Um, whenever I drop below about 40 seconds or so, my commentary becomes a little, a little sparser, a little bit more spread out as I panic try and push out the moves as quickly as possible but uh, for the time being things are actually getting just about back on track here um, I managed to hold off this push in the center and maybe I can get back to doing some hacking over on his king side um, do I put the queen on g6 or h5 that's not an easy question to answer, so I'll just drop the queen on g6 and not worry about it too much. Got threatening a knight, drop into d3 here. And he's just tucked his king away in the corner. Very sensible decision there. Uh, so he can swing a rook over to g1 sometimes as well. So I have to be quite careful of a, of a nasty counter-attack coming back in. Um, so I just want to keep supporting this. He's really lining up on the g7 square, queen on b2, bishop on c3, rook on g1. Um, so I'm going to retreat the bishop back to e4 and make it more difficult for him to move this bishop. But he's probably going to move the knight on f3 here. And I've got some knight d3 ideas in response. Uh, I've managed to equalise on the time. 
we've got uh, almost exactly a minute four seconds each uh, and generally I think black's doing well in this position so long as he doesn't get uh, absolutely destroyed on g7 um, my opponent's trying to calculate some line but he has to recapture with the knight now on g2 because of um, some trick involving uh, rook d1 check now uh, the question is how I go about doing this can I go f Three and he goes knight e3. That's annoying. All right, let's just put this queen on e4. I spent so much longer on that move than was uh, was a good idea, but uh, but hey, I think queen e4 was quite reasonable. And I'm going to play knight e3 as soon as I get a chance now. Queen e2 is met with queen takes c3, so queen there and then knight d3, and then that goes here. Uh, I just need this rook on d8 to be doing something, and it's not, and that's a bit frustrating. Um, so I'm going to have to keep on trying to play as quickly as possible in this position, because, uh, you know, we're heading for a blitz finish, and we've both got under 30 seconds. I've managed to keep some kind of advantage into the ending, even though this pawn on a5 is dropping. Uh, my really active pieces should be worth something here. Um... Having said which, you know, having extra material is not uh, not a disaster from his point of view. Um, but there you see I'm regaining the pawn and uh, I'm certainly very comfortable going into this ending. Um, it, it's probably a draw at, at slow play this position. But this is uh, the furthest from, from slow play that we could really be seeing. Which is... Uh, Oh dear, I've somehow blundered into this ending as lost. So I realised as I was um, as I was talking there that this ending was not as simple as I uh, had at first hoped. And there's no stalemate trick here. It's, and it's going to be... Uh, and I'll let him make me. And it's going to see me going 1-0 down in this matchup against square, square lols. Um, and now we get to see the white pieces. So so here, despite losing the first game, I'm going to open up with uh, f4, e4. Um, there aren't that many moves that make uh, this a terrible idea. But uh, d5 is, to be honest, not, not bad if you know that your opponent's going to play e4 and move 2. But uh, I'll kind of pretend that it's a really normal pawn sacrifice um, and desperately try and recover uh, and wonder why I agreed to this in the first place. Um, so he's just harassing my queen on d1. That's, that's a bit of a problem because now I've kind of sacrificed a pawn and the real issue is that um, what have I actually achieved in, in compensation? I don't have as much of a uh, development advantage as I would really need for this to be in any way worthwhile. So I'm going to have to do something creative in order to recover from this. But we'll see. I'll just put my queen on e3 there to make it hard for him to develop his bishop to c5. And, yeah, he's just playing it very sensibly. Not an awful lot going on. I'm just a pawn down. Uh, almost castled and allowed bishop c5 blundering my queen, which would have brought a rather unpleasant uh, end to the game for me. You know, because being a pawn down is, is slightly annoying, but, uh, but being a queen down would be trickier to come back from. Um... But yeah, actually playing f4 and e4 is not really leading to, to that many hacking opportunities, as it turns out. So that's something that I've learnt. At least not against uh, a strong fm. Um, and there we have the queens coming off. 
Um, but uh, but again, apart from the the being a pawn down here, uh, everything's kind of normal. Castle on opposite sides of the board. So with the queens on, I'd be looking to throw stuff over at the queen side. But uh, with this limited uh, forces for both sides. It's much more about maybe controlling the D-line. And okay, he's allowed me to double his pawns, which I guess gives me more chances of holding on to a draw, if that's exciting. Uh, which it isn't particularly. There are now two open files on the board. Uh, I need to be controlling at least one of them. But okay, my king, I'm not really that convinced by my opponent's play. Uh... That's with the caveat that he doesn't get a knight to e4. Which is what he's starting to try and do. If a knight suddenly lands on d4, then my position... On e4, sorry. Uh, my my position is going to look absolutely horrendous. Um, because, you know, I've got a bad bishop on e3 and whatnot. And that's what he's been doing. Trying to play his knight around. And I'm just going to have to shift his pawn from f5 if I can. Because uh, it's pretty miserable. And the knight is going to land there. Uh, given that my bishop can only control the dark squares. It's kind of difficult in the long run to stop him from doing this I suppose. But at least I can make it difficult for him to finish it off. So if I go rook d5 he's got rook takes e3 tricks. So just going to go. Oh, oh, can I go over to a4 here. Well, that's probably not a good idea but... But hey, uh, looking for counterplay right now, putting his pawn on b6. He is somewhat down on the clock. So he has to be a little bit careful here. And it's starting to get a bit more chaotic at this point. And I think I can just have this pawn off on c5. He'll go rook c8, I'm sure, and uh, and pick up couple of my pawns but I'm going to swing the rook over to d3 maybe and uh, try and cause some mischief got a pawn on f6 so that means if I ever do pick up the pawn on f7 he's going to be in a lot of trouble so just going about attempting to do that now and uh, why did I flick in the check first there wasn't really any benefit to that at all that I can think of now that uh, now that we've reached this position so now throwing a little rook d8 check idea and if he is rook b6 maybe i have some points with bishop f8 check and he's trying some tricks in this position but i'm not entirely certain how they work out well i've regained the pawn on b3 and we've just gone into this rather dull looking ending um you know i'm going to offer him a draw it's a pretty dull position. Ooh. And there we go. You know, I, have a, I am a couple of seconds up, but it would be, you know, if we had five seconds left, for instance, maybe it would be worth attempting to, to flag someone, but 30 seconds each, having a whole minute of both of us just trying to flag each other would be no fun uh, whatsoever, and pretty pointless. So, so now I have the advantage of the black pieces. Which means that uh, I don't need to. And he's gone 1f4 himself. So, okay. From Gambit is what we're going to play against that. And uh, and he's gone e4 in response. So we have a King's Gambit. Excellent. Uh, I don't think either of us really play this. But um, but <laughs> that's not a big deal. Uh, I can never remember what to do against the bishop's e4. I assume it's normally um, something to do with queen h4 check. But I'm going to play this early d5 variation like it's like it's a thing. And um, am I just going to get a bad position if I play this way? Probably. I'm not certain what I'm doing against queen e1 in this position. Or queen d3 for that matter. I'm not sure what I'm doing against moves is the general point. Uh, I'll just defend the pawn. If he'd gone queen e1, then queen g5 would have just been met with knight takes f4. But this also looks quite reasonable for my opponent. 